such an awesome God. You are, you are, Lord, the essence of our life, Lord. We worship you, we adore you, Lord. Capture us with your beauty, Lord. Arrest us with who you are. Make it practical, Holy Spirit, for us to understand how to walk every day with a focus on Christ, with our focus set on you, my Lord. Help us, Holy Spirit, that it will be practical, but that we will see the beauty of who you are in every day, that we will find you out there, find you in our hearts, find you in our thoughts, in our emotions, in our relationships, in our studies. We will find you there, Lord. That's our desire, that's our choice, that's our decision tonight as a unity. In Jesus' name, so we pray and so it will be. As all say, Amen, Amen. We can say thank you. We've said a lot this year about clarity in heart and in mind based on thankfulness. That is our year word, what God said to us for this year, that He wants to establish in our lives. We said to have clarity in heart, clarity in mind, that is so that heaven can flow through you, through your heart, through your mind, and that you are not troubled in every situation. Because whatever we can go through, our minds and our hearts can be troubled. You can even, we can say, be polluted. And then we cannot see where God is, what He is doing, what is He saying. But God wants to give us the breakthrough. And then we see, basically, in the, the key verse for this year, Philippians 4, verse 6, it says, Be anxious of nothing. Be anxious of nothing. And in this season, God is teaching you that. He's imparting that lifestyle for you and you need to take that in such a way so that you can stand with stature to stature to say i will be anxious of nothing of nothing but i can say that two thousand times it will not help unless i follow his strategy be anxious of nothing but but bring everything in prayer supplication and thanksgiving before the Lord. Amen? We said that uh, quite a few times. So it's about prayer, that's positioning, and supplication, that's intensity in my prayer, intensity. I put my everything in the place where I've positioned myself. Prayer is I've positioned myself with supplication, with intensity in my, in my prayer focus to God. And then there's a moment you know, we can pray a lot, and in Africa, you can go there. I remember in Uganda, these guys can pray. But then somewhere, like Deacon said last week, it can become shallow, and we can carry on for 10 hours. Or we need to go deep. We need to go deep, and we need to know when to say, thank you, Lord. Hello? So in that, in that place, we need to take the challenge to say, yes, Lord, we need to learn more and more how to pray. But especially also with intensity. But then at that place, I stand back and I say, thank you, Lord. I say, thank you, Lord. Now it's with you. I believe heaven is open about this situation. I stand back. And when I stand back, then something takes hold of me. What's that? Oh, you, you stand here. Now quickly be anxious. Be anxious. Right. And now in prayer. Okay, prayer. But so anxiety, take that hands and do this. Everybody, take your hands and bring it there. Okay. Thank you. So when you want to be anxious, you bring it in prayer. Supplication, you go deep. <laughs> and then you stand back. 
Want die nie, alright, I lost my hand here yet. Focus. <laughs> and you stand back, and you say, thank you, Lord. And when you do that, what is happening? Then the peace of God. Hello? Then he must just allow the peace of God to hold him, and he mustn't fight the peace. Donkey. So he's like, you are there, you are in, in, you are in this anxiety. Position yourself with prayer. Put intensity in your prayer. Put your whole heart, put your everything in that prayer. I mean, and then stand back and say thank you. And let God do it. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. Not true? Not true? Okay, so from that place, when you're standing there, God comes and he keeps you with his peace. You want to get involved in the fight. Peace. Your mind wants to get into anxiety again. Peace. Allow God to hold you there. So that from this place, no, 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 I'm not going back because what? He said already, thank you. He already said, thank you. Amen. So you already said thank you, and here the peace will keep you. Even though you don't understand. You don't feel it. You don't see things are happening. But when I'm in this place, under his peace, protected, my mind protected by his peace. Then verse 8, we said, then you can think what is pure, that what is clean. Think there where there's clarity. Hello? That was verse 8 of Philippians 4, verse 8. Further, my brethren, think upon these things, everything that is pure, that is lovely, that is this, that is that, that is admirable, boom, 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 boom. All of that. Are you with me? But your thoughts in a whole different place. Ay, ay, ay. That's where the enemy can come in and do a lot of rubbish. No, I don't want that. My mind and my heart need to be cleared. Hello? Clarity. So the beauty of heaven can come through. Beauty of heaven can come through. Praying in tongues is part of it. Just remember that. Praying in tongues is to tell your mind to shh, shh, shh. That's what you're telling your mind when you're praying in tongues. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Okay. So, what are we saying? Today we spoke. Yesterday we spoke. This month we spoke about the messenger. And all of that we talked about also. That you need to be the nation that has the capacity to inherit and possess the promises of God. Amen. Then we said, God took Israel out. <clears throat> and then he said, I brought you to myself. I didn't bring you to Canaan. I brought you to myself. Oh, you didn't know that. You thought he was just on his way to give you, to give you Canaan. No. He brought you to himself. That is his agenda. And if my prayer life is just to get out of Egypt and into Canaan, God, God help me with my issues about Egypt and help me to possess the land and take Canaan, then I'm missing the whole point. Because you will see heathen, you will see people with rotten hearts that they know how to get out of Egypt and they know how to take a whole country, how to take a Canaan. But what makes you different? God said, let my people go so that they can worship me. So that they can worship me. Egypt, Canaan, yes. That's part of the package. But the essence of the whole thing, get out to worship me. Get from, out from a place of slavery to worship me. Get out of a place of slavery to serve me. They were serving as slaves. And then God said, let my people go so that they can serve me because they will not serve me as slaves. Hello. But you will serve, you will serve God in a worship life throughout all you, you will serve the Egypt system. But one of the two, you will do, if we like it or not. If I don't choose the one, automatically I'm choosing the other one. Are you with me? May God help us that we will see that. So God brought them out, and he told them, do you see the success that I brought you? 
Can you see the success God has given you? Can you see the work that God has done already in you? Can you say thankful? Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that. Hello? We said, do you see the eagle's wings that he brought you on to himself? God said, I've drawn you to myself, brought you on eagle's wings. And he told them how precious they are, how they will reign as kings, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, a special people, all of that. He shared his heart with, with them. He, they are not even yet clean. They are in a certain lifestyle. They are in a place of thinking as slaves in the wrong way still. But immediately God is there to share his heart. God is there to put eternity in their hearts. To put his eternal purpose in their hearts. And that is revelation that says you will rule as kings and priests with me forever and ever and ever. Peter in one of his letters to the church says, you are a kingdom of priests, a royal nation, a holy nation. Hello? Taken out of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light to show forth and display what he has done. So as kings and priests, we will rule and reign under the king of kings and under the high priest, Jesus Christ. So it will happen, so it will be. Hello? But for that, he's saying, come with me. Walk with my authority, God says to Israel. God says, be in my presence. Come as a priest. Know that you are special. Know that I've brought you to me. Understand how special you are. And then he comes, and the last point, can you see his heart? Number seven. Can you see his heart? And remember what we said about the law? The law can be the curse in your life that brings death. What no, nothing else can bring so much death in you than the law. You don't you walk out here and you feel oh, all these things that I'm supposed to do and I'm not doing it. I feel guilty, I feel condemned, and all that rubbish. Instead of bringing it before the Lord, let him touch your heart. Hello? And set you free. And go out in his freedom with more beauty in your heart. With more beauty in your heart. God is in the freedom business and in the restoration business. Amen? Let's go with that. So, with the Ten Commandments, those who were here this morning, hopefully, there's five and there's five. Okay. Hard tissue, yeah. And the, the one five is all about you and God. The other five, all about you and you, you and your neighbor. First five, last five, about this. First five, remember God said, you will have no other gods before me. God said, it's me and it's me alone. God says, it's me and it's me alone. Secondly, he said, it's love and worship from your heart. No craven images, no nothing you bow down to. But if you love me, I will bless you and your children and their children and their children and their children. It's about love and worship. It's not about the law. Love and worship will be the essence of this lifestyle. But first, it's me and me alone. Love and worship. Third one, you will not use my name in vain. That's about what comes from your mouth is the overflow of your heart. I need your heart and I want your heart full out. God said it's me. He says it's love and worship. He says, it's your full heart. I've put my whole heart on the cross. You will put your whole heart in this relationship. That's the only way this relationship can work. Number four, the Sabbath. God's saying, your time is mine because I've given you time. Your time is in my hand. So whatever I ask of you to do, time can never be the excuse. Can never be the curse can never be the thing to manipulate something, to do something else. But time is there as a priority from God. And whatever He asks you to do with this season on earth, that is what you do because it belongs to Him. And number five was a promise that if you respect the relationships that He has given you, close around you, 
then you will inherit what he has for you. You will reach the destiny that he has for you. So we, God ends off this five principles about you and him with a promise. And he says, those who I've, I've given you around you, see who they are. And you need to see who's the ones that he has given you and honor them. And honor them. And if you can do that, you will reach your destiny. You will have the promises. That is God putting it out there. And then the other five, it's not just you cannot do that and you cannot do that and you mustn't do this and you must do that. No. It's because you are precious and you are his child. God is actually tuning the rest. How they need to behave towards you. Hello. It is. Nobody can steal from you. Nobody's allowed to steal from you. Nobody can kill you with words or kill you physically. They are not allowed. They cannot commit adultery in their relationships towards you. Their relationships woman, must be genuine. It must be there. It must be heart-to-heart -heart connection. Hello? Hello? You'll bear no false witness. What they say about you must be true. They can, they're not allowed to go behind your back and talk a lot of nonsense. They must be true witnesses of the Christ in you. And lastly, they're not allowed to covet your things. They're not allowed to become jealous of what you have. That is now if you take the, f the last five commandments and just turn it into understanding his heart for you and how precious you are that he He's saying, this is how they're supposed to treat you. But this is also how you're supposed to treat your brother and your sister. Even though you think they are not worthy of it. Because they're like this and this and they have this attitude and they, and they mock you or they talk behind your back or this. Whatever. Because we are precious. That last five commandments. You better treat one another in that way. Because I've made them sons and daughters of mine, says the Lord. If I can see his heart in what he says and what he expects of me, life can be much so much more beautiful. Tell your neighbor, life can be beautiful. Say it with attitude. Life can be beautiful. We quickly take seven points then. If we then talk about tonight still, how these guys went from Egypt right through. <coughs> I want to say in my day with it was the women with the issue of blood. And uh, anybody, what came to me this morning was before they had to see Moses, before Israel, the nation of God, had to decide, I will follow that leader. There's somebody that I choose to trust that he has the words of God. That somewhere you need to find someone that you believe he has the words of God. Egypt must believe that this man, I will just have to trust him. And that's freaky because Moses is going to lead us into some other place and we don't know where. Hello? Hello? But before that, it's about the blood. It's about the blood. The tenth plague. When we get out of the fight with the enemy, dealing with this, the Egypt strongholds, all the demonic strongholds that Moses actually dealt with, he was not just doing some nice tricks from heaven. He was dealing with demonic strongholds that were broken. Ten of them. And the last one about child sacrifices at the end of the day there's one sacrifice that will stand and that is the child of God the son of God hello and to deal with that with, with the impact of, of a child's sacrifice what happens in the tenth one there will be those that will be protected by the death of the firstborn from heaven so that their firstborn will not die. And that blood on the 
daar kousijns, wat is daar goed dier kousijne? Wat? Jobhouse. Well, that blood, hallo, 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 I stole the focus. That blood will say, no, I'm set free. I have a son that will have destiny. I have an excellent future because of the blood. And destruction to the firstborn will not happen. The spirit of death cannot come. And the distraction cannot come close to me. Cannot come close to you because of the blood. Not because we are perfect against Egypt. But because of the blood. Revelation says they have overcome through the blood of the Lamb. Then, after the blood, the word of their testimony. And then also because they didn't love their life even unto death. But it starts with the blood, my brother, <coughs> my sister, so that in that place you know I cannot stand against Egypt. But through the blood of Christ I can stand and I can remind the devil that you've lost. You've lost. You have nothing on me. You have nothing on me because I'm protected by the blood. Amen? Say, so you have nothing on me, Satan. In the name of Jesus. For the blood of Christ is against you. And I'm covered by the blood. Amen. You are covered with his excellence. You are covered with his success. You are covered with the proof of forgiveness from heaven. You are covered by that proof. That's where you are and who you are. And that in the tenth plague, when it's the biggest manifestation of that, what is called destruction for destiny for Egypt, it's the place where God says, but for you, I've given my firstborn. He is the lamb that has died from the beginning, from the foundation of the earth. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. Let's not go into that now. But bottom line, bottom line, God says, I've provided for you. I've provided for you. So that you can have awesome destiny. Do this. And eat this. Standing because you're on your way into destiny. That's actually before number one. Moses. Okay. So let's go with Moses. My, my question to you is who's Moses? Moses is you can always blame someone in authority. You can always blame a father. You can always blame your mother. Your stepfather, your stepmother, your stepbrother, your whatever thing you can think of. For why certain things are not working out in your life. You can blame your boss. You can blame the pastor. You can blame whoever, your husband, your wife. But at the end of the day, somewhere, you will have to trust someone. They had to trust Moses. Point one. They had to top. Somebody there. Moses is there. Hallelujah. <laughs> On the mountain. <laughs> Are you with me? Somewhere you need to deal with the fact that you must be able to trust people. Hmm. Sure. Well, God, that's his choice that he will trust them with his name, with his presence, trust them with his spirit, etc., etc. Let's not go there once again. But what did I say? Make sure you understand Moses. Who's the Moses in your life and how you will understand honor with all of that. Number two, fire and the cloud. Pillar of cloud. What am I saying? They had to understand the whole thing about the fire at night when the cold of the winter could come. We call it winter, but okay, it's the desert in the night. And it's cold. But this fire is keeping them warm. You stay with God's fire because you walk away. Your heart will get cold, get cold out there. Your heart will get cold out there when you walk away. But in the fire, many times, there's also discipline. The fire burns away all the rubbish. So it's not always lacquer fire. But if I stay in his fire, the warmth and the fire of God will burn clean. It will burn me also that it's like the gold refining, refine, refining fire. Are you with me? 
So that fire is making you beautiful. Stay with the fire that makes you beautiful. Stay with the fire that protects you from getting more and more a cold heart. You cannot get cold out there. And the fire is gone. No, just stay with the fire. Say, Holy Spirit told me how to stay with the fire. And in the day that the sun coming down on you in the desert, that circumstances and things are just against you. Your energy is drained. You're walking in the desert. You are dehydrating. There's no energy. You are, you are out of it. Because under the freshness of a cloud, it's not there. What is the cloud in your life? What is that pillar of cloud of, can I say moist, that's over you? That bring this freshness. And you stay with that freshness. Even though, though you go through the most desertless place. You stay with freshness. Doesn't matter where you go. It's the sun from above. Hot as hell. It's the desert. It's the, there's nothing. But you stay with freshness. Because you're not going with a cloud. Hello? May God help you. You need to understand how to walk with the Holy Spirit in such a way. Amen. Number three, the Red Sea. Remember we talked about this, about your dead end. Hello? Well, you come, you've decided, yes, I will do these things. I will, I will take the breakthrough. I saw what happened in Egypt. I will choose to follow and go with Moses. And there we go. I'm obedient. And uh, there we come away to a dead end. And how many times you wanted to do something for God and you went out there and at a dead end and then you turn to the left or the right instead of going through for the first test that comes your way. Test when you feel offended. Test when you feel this. Test when this doesn't work out or that. Instead of standing there and say, God, what now? Evaluate the situation. See is there. Pharaoh and the Soldiers are there. So, use your brain and go to the left or the right. And too many times you went to the left or the right instead of going through. But we need to hear God. We need to understand why God organizes the Red Sea. It's not to lead you into a dead end, but it's to drown your enemy. Hello. It's not to lead you to a dead end, but to drown your enemy. To show who he is and how, what he can do. Amen? But now allow him to brag about himself. Allow him to show who he is. So there at your, at your dead end, where you feel with the finances, the emotions, the things that you trust him for, and it doesn't work out and the, with the job that you want to align in the right direction. No. And it's a struggle. Don't throw a tantrum there. Don't go and stand and throw a tantrum there. You need clarity of heart, clarity of mind, so that you are, can think what he is thinking right there at the Red Sea. You need there to think what heaven is thinking when you're standing in front of the Red Sea at the dead end. <clears throat> you with me? God will organize more than one, the Red Sea for you. But if you can understand how to deal with this Red Sea. When there's a Red Sea, or then next time with Jordan, you'll know what to do. You'll know what to do. May God help you help me. See, understand, and handle Sinai, the mount, where God took them there instead of going to Canaan. Let's go. We waited 430 years. Let's go for Canaan. No. Now, it's, you know, somebody, they came for the food, or they came for this or that, and now you, uh, they have these long speeches. You know, at the wedding, nobody experienced that. I've experienced that, especially at the Sutu wedding. Yo! It's the, an the uncle and the other uncle and the grandmother, and there's even a godfather, and I don't know what. 
You know that? And all of them have something to say. And not the short version. And I thought, why didn't I bring any bugger here in my pocket, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. And you and the food. And it's not the food from Egypt, you know? Now, these guys, they are, they, they are now ready to taste the food, to taste Canaan. Now they must wait here for a lot of speeches, you know, <laughs> here at Mount Sinai. Uh, uh, be careful what you do when you need to wait. Ay, ay, ay. A lot of rubbish can come out. You know in your lifestyle with God, when you are trusting God for, and it's the time for breakthrough, and you are, you are nearly there. You can feel it. Then we start off getting in a hurry. Hello? But when you feel like getting into a hurry, and Moses is there for 40 days, and then this, and then that, and you're here, and guys, something needs to happen. I think Moses is dead up there. He's not coming back. That's what they said. So, yeah. Let's worship. But no baboon will worship, but a human being will worship. And I think if you don't know how to handle Sinai, there at the very place where God wants to share his heart for, with you, there at the very place where his presence is, is manifest, there at that very place you will build a golden, off, golden calf. Right there you will build something to worship. How can that be? Make sure that when you see more of God, what do you do in his presence? Because when you have tasted and see that God is good and you know how to pray, you know how to be with him, but then he, he takes his time. And things are not according to what you've expected it to be. Then you can get disappointed. And when you get discouraged and disappointed, you are in the perfect place to build a golden calf. And to worship it. You are at the perfect place. To build your golden calf. At Mount Sinai. Make sure that you understand. And when you see his presence. And you want answers. Because you want to move. That you will have the heart like Moses had. At that mountain. I said God. There is no Canaan. If you are not coming with us. We stay at this mountain with your glory, with the open heaven. We stay at this place if you don't come with us. So I can go for now. Oh, if the things don't change and if my circumstances don't change, I'm, I'm uh, whipping myself and I'm hanging and you know, whatever, or I just do my whatever I want to. That is getting all the gold out, man. Paying the price for your golden calf. No, it cannot be. It cannot be in Jesus' name. Well, there's a man up there in his presence, God's presence, that says, it's not about Canaan. It's not about Egypt and Canaan. It's about worshiping you. It's about being with you. And if you don't go to that Canaan, I don't want to be seen in that Canaan. Me, Moses. Hello? And God says, I'm pleased with you. I'm pleased with you. And Moses changed God's mind. Hello? And Joe, Moses has the capacity to change God's mind about who's going and who's not going. <laughs> Are you with me? Trust God that you will see and understand and handle that Mount Sinai. Because there, you can organize your golden calf. Red Sea, you can organize Pharaoh to capture you again. Fire and cloud, you can organize for your heart to be hardened in the cold. For you to be What's that word? It's not scorched in the sun. Scorched to become fried botong out there. But there's no life in you. Botong, there's no life. You know that. You know what's botong? There's no life. It's you need to deal with all of that. You need to deal with your leadership issues with most. 
We need to deal with all that rubbish, my brother, my sister. But with each one of them, there's such an excellent strategy from God. One, two, three, four. There's excellence. Heaven is pouring its heart out to you. With one, two, three, four, up to seven. Number five, the desert. Desert. So what are we doing in the desert? What are we doing in the desert? We're learning that our heart must be with him. Doesn't matter what, our heart is with you. We're following you. We, still have, we have everything. We don't have everything that we want, but we have everything that we need. We are on, actually on the way to have everything that we want also and exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or pray. That we're going to have in Canaan. But now, can you have contentment? Can you be content? Can you be content, Israel? And honor God and be thankful once again that you have everything that you need. And what you need is the manna and the quail only for today because you need to learn how to be dependent on God. So tomorrow you need to get it again. Hello? Are you with me? What do you do in the desert out there with the manna and the quails? Every day you need the word. You shall not live by bread alone, but by every word from the mouth of God. Every day you need his word. Every day you need to eat his word. Every day his word is fresh. You cannot go on the old revelation. Yes, it must become a foundation. Yesterday's revelation become a foundation today. It's not the revelation today, it's the foundation now today because you received it yesterday. Hello? Yesterday's revelation is the foundation for you today to build on further for your life. And I need to understand that. Then I, I can go from, from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Less of me, more of him. And it all can happen. Amen? The desert can be an excellent place because you can come out of the desert with such a lot of testimonies. Such a lot of testimonies. What you know, who from Zuavolk, you know, about this cloud that's going all with the people and the, everything is just fine. Where have you heard about this fire just moving with this nation? All the Amalekites and the Ratalites and all, all, all those guys are thinking. And they've heard about these guys. Heard about food falling from heaven. Hello? From water out of a rock. From even meat falling from heaven. And so like that. The nations heard about that, man. And we can moan and groan. Now, is Israel moaned about it. I mean, Israel moaned and they groaned. But the nations out there said, wow. Wow. Are you with me? That what the world out there could wow about when, the, what the, when they look at you and me and then we still moan about what we have. Sorry, Lord. Not anymore, in Jesus' name. Amen. Not amen that I repented, but amen that you also repented. <laughs> so, that's the desert. Yet. Then we come to Jordan. We come to Jordan, my brother, my sister. And now, on this point number seven, you can write there, put it out there, it's Canaan. Now, the question is, how much of Egypt is still in you before you cross the Jordan? You cannot cross the Jordan if you don't have revelation. Remember we talked about this for a few Sundays a year or two ago, about the fact that what is the revelation in your heart when you cross the Jordan? You cannot cross the Jordan without a revelation of, with God, everything's going to go. We can, I'm going to go with God. I believe His promises. Hello? God says to Joshua, I will be with you, but this law cannot... It cannot depart from your mouth and from your life. Every place you go, I will give it to you. And the soldier said, if there is one guy that don't obey you, Joshua, we kill him. We are one unity. 
We are one unity. That was a different type of people, not with a lot of petty issues about everything. It was a specific, pure generation that went in there with a fear of God on their lives because they saw what happened with their parents. For not obeying, but for moaning and groaning and have, having issues with so many things. And they said, no. And our parents taught us. And God says, jump, you jump. You just ask how, how high. Yeah? Like they always say. And the fear of God was on them. So Joshua, what you say, that goes. Somebody don't agree, we kill. A certain type of person. You need to be. But if there's too many other voices in your mind, the voice of Egypt, then when you need to face the giant, if you just hear the voice of the giant, you don't even hear the voice of the giant. You hear some other pathetic voice in your head about the giant, and then you think that voice is the voice from the giant. You remember why? Conrad, ne? Because the giant didn't say to the 12 spies, you look like a grasshopper. But the spies went back and told Moses, we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. So you can decide how the enemy looking at you and you can fear. Or you can decide how God is looking at you. Hello? And Joshua and Caleb says, no, no, no. God has promised us the land. He will surely give it to us. How much of God will be in you, the revelation of God and his promises, and how much of Egypt? Joshua and Caleb, they stood on the promises and what God said. God has given us the land. God has given us the land. And these giants, they are our food. Like we said, they were not cannibals. No. But this is a challenge that we can grow from. These giants not can going to intimidate us. We're going to grow. We're going to benefit from them. Something that is your food is for your benefit. We will benefit through these giants. This is what Joshua and Caleb is saying. So if you are full of God and full of His promises and full of what He has said and you fill yourself with what He has said and not fill yourself with your own moaning and groaning and issues and negativity and whatever you can think of. But you didn't fill yourself with your own hamars. But with the food from heaven. And you filled yourself from that place. You cannot but say, Amen. The giants are our food. We're just going to grow. These giants will work for our, for our benefit. Because at the end of the day, you know he did. Because in the way that they conquered the giants, they didn't have a fight with the giants. God organized it. But the fear of God came on the nations when they had to face giants. The fear of God came on the nations. The giants was for their benefit because he brought the testimony of God into the nations of this awesome God that took this nation against the giants. It's not possible. Why? Because he's a God. And he wanted to show himself. He wanted to brag about himself again. Hello? So he can make sure that there's giants in front of you. So that what? So that you have some food. That's what Josh and Caleb said. Is he met me? It looks like we've been lost. No. He is still here. We are finishing off. This point seven. Really. So at the Jordan, when you make crucial decisions... You will quit. When you it's the point of breakthrough, you will quit. You will quit and go back to the point of reference, point of safety that you know where something worked at least. At least we had nice food in Egypt. At least we were type of safe. You know, hey, we had good houses. The ten plagues didn't come on us. It came on all the rest. It didn't come on us. Are, are you with me? So Fire Moses, kill, stone Joshua and Caleb, get a new leader, and we make a responsible decision and go back to Egypt. 
we went through enough turmoil now. Don't, let's not be stupid and get over this Jordan and we need to face all those giants. We are not soldiers. We were slaves. We didn't learn how to be soldiers. How can we face them? Get over it. Use your mind. Use your brain. <laughs> Hello? So what are you doing with your Jordan? Or, or with how many opportunities in your past did you come to point number six and then you had to go back and decide who's Moses and who's not Moses? And go back and then tomorrow's opportunity up to the Jordan, but then you cannot make that decision because of giants that you see. And you think you are responsible by evaluating the amount of giants, their height and their everything, and therefore based on that you turn back or to the left or you wait further. Or and you can miss so many opportunities. And the next day and the next day you must get back to who's Moses. And where's the fire of the Spirit that my heart doesn't get cold? Where's the dead ends in this situation? Where's God's principles? How do I know who I am in Christ? Point number four. How is the earth for me? How the principles work in my life? Five, no intimidation. How the provision will be there for everything. So that here at the Jordan that I stand for the 300th time. This time I'm going to cross. I'm not going to go do that again. So this process is not just for once. It's with so many opportunities tomorrow that God wants to give you. That I need to work out this pattern for my life. Like a pattern. But when I enter Canaan, when I enter Canaan, I need to know my God. Those principles must work. work. Otherwise, there's no way that I will walk around Jericho. You know, these are quite some enemy. We need to deal with it. And you get, yeah, you get excited and then you run around. You run around Jericho. I said that to who? I can't remember. Then you run around Jericho. And with this thing, we need to fight this. And because either you are tense or there's anxiousness or, or you fear or, or you're too excited about it, then you run around. And the moment that you were supposed to, ah! to roar like a lion, <sighs> there's nothing because there's no breath. Everybody do this. <laughs> that is when you run around Jericho instead of walk around Jericho. It's because you're not taking God's space, knowing that the battle belongs to the Lord. But you're trying too hard, and you're running into this place, and your energy is gone. And the moment you're supposed to roar like a lion, there's no roar in you because you are too tired. And the walls cannot fall. Even though... You did it in a very excellent time. You know? Just like that. There's no roar in you. Emil. Taking a photo here. Are you with me? Are you with me? Please, my brother and my sister, understand this one with Canaan. Understand these principles because it's not about getting into Canaan. You are slaughtered by the enemy in Canaan. If the principles cannot work through you. And it's a shame on you that you are aborting your destiny. And that your destiny swallow you up. Your destiny become the curse. Your destiny become your enemy. Canaan become your enemy. All the Canaanites and all become an enemy that will fight you. And you will, you will be slaughtered. You will lose the, the whole fight. Because you entered Canaan. Why? Because you entered Canaan in the wrong way. Was he just, I want to punish you to walk 40 years? No. I need to have a generation that will stand against the enemy. For my glory, for my honor. And also because I want to honor them as a people. But if they cannot fear me, if they cannot respect me, if they cannot honor me, if they cannot obey me, how can I take them in? I can take them in to be slaughtered. Or I can keep them in the desert and protect them and to become a generation 
that will walk with me like this. Amen. It's God's grace that with certain areas in your life, He's not taking you into Canaan. It's God's grace on you. It's God's grace on me. Not we don't qualify, but it's His protection and His love. But He is taking us through that processes again. So look at the Word. Learn from it. Take these principles. Get into the Word. Amen? So that God can trust you, can entrust you with so much more. Too many times it happens with people when, when they have all these things or all these level of, this level of success and they billion or how many. They, they just become this other type of person. <sighs> Give somebody a stage and whoa. Where people can <laughs> praise them. And you can be very shocked what's happening. Gave one of the key key, 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 three angels, a stage in heaven. And what happened? He became the heart of hell. Are you with me? Be careful of the stage. Be careful of the success. Oh, God wants to give it to you. That was his promise, point number five, in the five principles of the ten. He wants you to have Cain. He wants you to have an excellent destiny, an excellent future. Milk and honey where he slays the giants and you eat the milk and the honey. He wants that. That's his desire for you. But then you must be able to contain, able to have your heart in the right place, to live with him in that, to enjoy it with your God. Where Canaan is not your heart. Canaan is not your joy, but Christ is your joy in Canaan. And the whole thing is to have it, to enjoy it with him. If you cannot enjoy it with him, you don't want to enjoy it. That's what Moses told God. True? So God, come and help us, please. God, you have only the best for us. You have only the best for us. God, but we don't want to abort our destiny. <clears throat> we don't want the excellence that you have for us, the Canaan that you have for us. God, we don't want that to become a curse. The blessings that are that you want to bestow on us, the blessings that you want to rain down, that it must rain down on us. God, you want to protect us from that blessing, if that blessing will take our hearts away from you. Help us, Lord, we choose to, to see those that you have given us, that you, we're supposed to trust in our lives, like a Moses. God, help us with a fire. Let's just stand before the Lord. Lord, help us with a fire. If you are here, we're going to pray for a few people. I will believe the anointing is going to flow. God going to touch you tonight. God going to touch you tonight. So I just want you to come out as I mentioned it. And the leaders will be here. The leaders are going to pray for you. There will be an anointing that will flow. And you're going to have your breakthrough tonight. In Jesus' name. So you know with a fire, you're supposed to walk with a fire, but sometimes you walked away from the fire where your heart became cold in some certain areas. If you know that you need that prayer to come back to the fire because your heart became cold, I want you to come out. And the second one about the clouds. If you know freshness is not always there, but you experience hardness of circumstances, I want you to come out. I want you to come that we can pray for you right now. Guys, I know people need to be prayed for. Just make the choice. The Red Sea. That dead end. You are intimidated when you find a dead end. Maybe you're not in a dead end now, but when you find a dead end, then you are frustrated and it's like you want to give up. And it's not like you stand there and trust God for the breakthrough and hear His voice. It's like you go and sit or you go and stand there in a different place. God's going to give you the breakthrough tonight so that that pattern is broken in your life. I need you to come so that we can pray for you. Sinai, you need to see God's heart and not the law. Sinai, you need to see how precious you are. You need to see how valuable you are. And you know in your heart, you don't see yourself as valuable. You don't see yourself as, as being this treasure from the heart of the Father. Allow God to touch you. 
Allow God to touch you tonight. Allow God to touch you tonight. Desert. In that place of desert, you feel there's always a lack. There's always a lack. And you don't understand how to see that you have what you need. You feel it's like crisis management the whole time. But God says, it's not crisis management. Tomorrow I must trust God again. Yes, He wants that. He wants you to trust Him tomorrow again. Because He's jealous for your love. And that you find problem and you are discouraged, frustrated in the desert process. Come out that we can pray with you. That we can pray with you. That we can pray with you so that God can do His work, what He wants to do. Standing at the Jordan, you're seeing for your destiny. You're seeing intimidation. God, I, I don't see the finances to do that. I cannot finish my study, so I don't, cannot see the work that will open up for me. And you know certain things need to be unlocked for your destiny. <clears throat> but God needs to touch your perspective. God needs to touch your perspective so that you will not make a wrong evaluation at the Jordan. Your perspective at the Jordan can kill your destiny. The, your perspective at the Jordan can bring you to die in the desert or to cross the Jordan into Canaan. And God want to touch your perspective tonight that it will change, will change. You will have the right perspective because you will enter the promises that God has for you. Therefore, you will find that change even tonight. It will happen for you in Jesus' name. And Canaan will not be your curse. Canaan will be a place where you and your dad can enjoy life. Canaan will be a place where you and your best friend Jesus Christ will enjoy life. But you will have the capacity to obey God. Doesn't matter what He asks of you. Doesn't matter how ridiculous to walk around a Jericho. You will not you will not be foolish and go too fast. And if you are here and you know you are running around Jericho trying to organize walls to fall. You cannot organize walls to fall. And if you put in that performance and you're performing before the Lord, performing before your boss, that performance will kill you and you will try and scream, but the walls will not fall. And tonight you are laying that down so that you can walk around Jericho and you don't have to run and lose on all your energy to try and run around Jericho. God, I pray for every man, woman here in front. God, you want to do a major work in their lives. Tonight they have their breakthrough. Tonight you're going to touch them in a supernatural way. God, you're going to be there for them. I thank you for that. I honor you for that, that you just do a great work in these men and these women, Lord. I pray for the anointing on the leaders that will flow, that the anointing on the leaders will flow and that you will just come and you will just do a great work. I honor you for that, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you come and you touch these men and women. Anoint the leaders. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May you be blessed. Have an awesome week. You can be there just in prayer for the, if you have friends here in front. Otherwise, there's something to be blessed with, coffee, tea, and something for the building fund there at the back. Let's enjoy one another. And let's enjoy God's presence. No Canaan without God. Let's just say that. No Canaan without God. Amen. Have a nice week.